This is a historic moment and a, a real, very important uh, new being is born today. I'm ambassador of South Korea to the United States. And what do you think my dream will be? My dream is wider and deeper relations between Korea and United States. Okay, so we can start now. My name is Yonggi Kim Reno. I'm Professor Emeritus of Korean Language and Culture and International Affairs. This is a historic moment and a, a real, very important uh, new being is born today, officially. And uh, there are so many of you here, it really moves me too personally. I'd like to invite uh, uh, Professor Greg Brzezinski, who is uh, the interim director for this semester because our director is on her sabbatical. So, Greg. Thank you, Yankee. Um, I, um, I'd like to uh, welcome everybody to this inaugural celebration for the GW Institute for Korean Studies. This is a great time to study Korea, and it's an especially exciting time to be promoting Korean studies here at the George Washington University. During the last 50 years, South Korea has become a leading center of global innovation and a vibrant democracy. Its cultural influence around the world is far, far greater than its geographic size. And I think as the, this afternoon's conference is going to make clear, South Korea has a rich literary heritage and its contemporary writers and poets have drawn praise from the international community of critics and scholars. I'm especially excited to continue working with my excellent colleagues in Korean studies here at GW. Uh, Professor Young Ki Kim Reno, uh, she planted the seeds of our Korean pro studies program when she arrived at GW during the 1980s, and she has continued to nurture them since. She has been a welcoming beacon for everybody who wants to study, research, or learn about Korea at this university. Building on the foundation that she laid, the university later hired Korea experts, including myself, Celeste Arrington, Richard Grinker, Myok Pak, and Jisoo Kim. And uh, Professor Kim, who you'll hear from next, also played a critical role in establishing this institute after only seven years at GW. She has already become a very important force in the field of Korean studies. Through her tireless efforts, GW won a grant from the Academy of Korean Studies that made this institute possible. At the Korea Institute, we will take advantage of Korea's growing political and cultural importance, and we will take advantage of the strengths of this university in Korean studies. We, will, we have a great schedule of events lined up for the spring, as you can see if you look at the back of your brochure, including two lectures that are on very timely subjects, our signature conference in May, uh, and several other events which are not on the back of the brochure, but you'll be hearing about. Uh, so anyway, I will be brief, and I, I would just say that we look forward to making GW into a hub of Korean studies in the DC area, I thank you all for attending, and I hope to see many of you at our events in the spring and in the next five years. Thank you very much. So now I invite Jisoo Kim. She is the director of the new institute. 
She's, as I said, she's on her sabbatical this year. She flew in yesterday from Seoul. So let's welcome Jisoo. Thank you, Yangi. Um, I would like to welcome all of our distinguished guests, conference speakers, and audience today. Before I explain about GW's strength in Korean studies and our institute's mission, I would like to first thank the, the Academy of Korean Studies, National Endowment for the Humanities, Embassy of the Republic of Korea, Literature Translation Institute of Korea, and the Korean Literary Society for Washington for making today's event possible. In particular, I would like to thank those who have shown tremendous support at GW in the process of establishing the, the Institute for Korean Studies, starting with our President Stephen Knapp, Dean Ruben Brigitte of the Elliott School of International Affairs, Dean Ben Vincent of the Columbian College of Arts and Sciences, Senior Associate Provost for International Strategy, Doug Shaw, Vice Dean of the Elliott School, Ed McCord, former Associate Dean for Research in the Elliott School, Hope Harrison, and many, many other great colleagues. I'd also like to thank the steering committee of the Institute for Korean Studies, Professor Younggi Kim Renaud, Professor Richard Grenker, Professor Greg Brzezinski, Professor Celeste Arrington, and Professor Mio Park. They have all worked so hard to make today's event possible. It is truly an exciting moment for Korean studies at GW. GW's connection to Korea goes far back to 1892 when Seo Jae-pil, or Philip Jason, his English name, graduated from GW's medical school. Although GW's connection to Korea has long history, Korean studies developed considerably during the last three decades. Professor Kim Renaud was the architect of building Korean studies at GW, and we now offer courses in Korean history, language, literature, and political science. And they're not only offered to GW students, but also to students at other institutions in DC area. We also have our annual Hamusu Colloquium in the Korean Humanities, and we just had the very successful 24th colloquium organized by Professor Richard Grenker last November, and it is one of the longest existing Korean Studies colloquium series in the area. Another strength of Korean Studies at GW is that we currently have two endowed professorships for Korean Studies, one in history, which is my position, and the other in political science, Professor Arrington's position. We recently succeeded in receiving a third Korea Foundation endowed professorship to hire a Korean literature professor. Thanks to Korea Foundation, Dean Vincent, President uh, Nab and Dean Vincent for their strong support, and again, Professor Kim Renaud for her endless work she put into making this position possible. I know how competitive and difficult it was to get this third position. Our Korean studies faculty and strong program will allow us to play a leading role in Korean studies, not only in the area, but also in the nation and the world. As I just explained, we already have a strong Korean studies program at GW. However, it is now time to move up to the next level. The Academy of Korean Studies awarded GW a core university program for Korean studies grant. This grant, close to a million dollars, made it possible to establish the Institute for Korean Studies, which is the first in DC area. And our mission is to strengthen the existing Korean studies program by promoting the Korean humanities in the nation's capital. And we have good reasons to emphasize Korean humanities in Washington, D.C., where so much of the discussion is focused on Korean politi politics and security matters. So in pursuing our mission, we have three specific goals. First, because we are located in the heart of the nation, it is very crucial, it is, it is crucial that we reach out to communities in the area. We will engage in outreach activities targeting professionals and policymakers to encourage a deeper understanding of Korea through activities that introduce them to Korean history, literature, culture, and culture to build uh, fresh perspectives on Korea. Second is to expand GW's Korean studies infrastructure and create an interdisciplinary bridge between the humanities and other fields such as social science, business, law, education, and engineering. Third, it will develop a robust Korean studies curriculum by creating a Korean language and literature undergraduate major, training MA and PhD students, and offering new courses, summer study abroad programs, and internships. 
Uh, for other various uh, activities, uh, please look at the brochure for as it has this uh, as it has detailed uh, information about our activities. Through our scholarly teaching and outreach activities, we hope to produce high quality scholarship, offer more opportunities for our students to study about Korea and become Korea experts in various sectors of the society, provide deeper understanding of Korea's history and culture to professionals and policymakers in DC area. Um, before I end, I would like to just make this one final comment saying that uh, I, when I teach his, my history of Korea class, I tell my students that Jimmy Carter once said that he wished he had known North Korean history better when he negotiated with North Korea. So if we take this quote seriously, I think our Institute for Korean Studies could play a critical role here in the nation's capital. So as you can see, we have a lot coming a lot going on in the coming years, and I hope all of you will able to show continued uh, interest in GW's Institute for Korean Studies. Thank you. Thank you, Jisoo. Now I'd like to invite Stephen Knapp, the 16th president of the George Washington University, to deliver the opening address. He's been such a supporter of Korean studies and a good friend of Korea. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Young Ki. And I want to thank you not only for your role moderating today, but as you've already heard uh, from earlier speakers, the, uh, the very important role that you played in helping to create and in certainly inspiring the development of Korean studies here at the George Washington University. By the way, I'm delighted to welcome those who haven't been here before to our City View Room. We regard this as a very a powerful symbol of what it means to be the largest university in our nation's capital. Um, in fact, if you drew a line from the State Department to the White House, which you can't see, it's right on the other side of that building there, uh, and another line from the Treasury Department to the World Bank, they would intersect in this room where we are right now. And we also like the fact that it affords us a very nice view of what we like to think of as our monument that's the George Washington Monument right out the window here. Well, I really am delighted to welcome you to the official opening of the GW Institute for Korean Studies. And I'd like to acknowledge, uh, we have many distinguished guests. Let me acknowledge a few of those, starting with His Excellency An Ho Young, the Ambassador of the Republic of Korea to the United States. Dr. William D. Bro Adams, Chairman of the National Endowment for the Humanities, who has generously funded today's inaugural conference uh, through one of his coveted chairman's grants. And I have to say uh, that uh, Dr. Adams has been a terrific partner for the university right here um, as we're such close neighbors. And when, on the occasion of his very important trip to uh, the Republic of Korea last October, uh, he um, asked me if we could do something in the area of, of Korean humanities because it is, as uh, Director Kim mentioned, it's an area that's not as much focused on here in Washington, D.C. as it really deserves to be. And so we're delighted to be able to step up and um, bring together an important group of speakers and guests to uh, reflect on the role of the humanities uh, in relation to the relationship between our nation and the Republic of Korea, which is such an important uh, global relationship. Let me also recognize An Chang Ho, Chairman Emeritus at Rexon Pharmaceuticals Incorporated, Sue Vinnis, the President of Cohen DC, Kim uh, Ki Chan, Professor of Business Administration at the Catholic University of Korea, Park Hyun Suk, President of the Korean Literary Society of Washington, the uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Sung Kon, uh, Kim Sung Kon, rather, who is President of the Literature and uh, Translation Institute of Korea, and uh, and finally Lee Shiyun, Regional Director of the Korea Foundation's DC office, who has joined us here this morning. We're very grateful to the Academy of Korean Studies for its grant that helped us establish the institute, as you heard from Director Kim to the Korea Foundation for its support during the last three decades, and especially for its assistance, as you just heard, in establishing what are now three endowed professorships in Korean studies at GW, which really makes us a very powerful um, uh, institution for the focus on Korean studies. And uh, also, again, the Literature Translation Institute of Korea, which has supported so many of our activities over the years. The GW Institute for Korean Studies will ensure the Korean humanities will have a strong and abiding presence in the heart of this nation's capital and will also help cement GW's position as a global leader in Korean studies. In fact, among US universities, George Washington enjoys an unusually long and distinguished history of engagement with Korea. 
We have many distinguished Korean alumni, and you heard one of those mentioned uh, by Director Kim, Soo Jae Peel, who earned his medical degree from George Washington in 1892. He was the first Korean, in fact, to receive an American medical degree and was also a ch champion of the Korean independence movement and the first Korean to become a naturalized U.S. citizen and is credited in many ways with helping, with being, as it, as it were, the father of modern Korea in part through his role of publishing the first newspaper that was printed in Hangul rather than in uh, Chinese characters and a uh, very significant uh, a person in the history of, of Korea. Uh, and next I'll mention Syngman Rhee, the founding president of the Republic of Korea, who graduated from GW with a Bachelor of Arts degree in 1907. I'll also mention Lee Hee-bum, the uh, former Minister of Trade, Industry, and Energy for the Republic of Korea and President of the Pyeongchang Organizing Committee for the 2018 Olympic and Paralympic Winter Games, who earned an MBA at George Washington in 1987. As a matter of fact, George Washington's largest alumni community outside of the United States is in the Republic of Korea. And uh, we currently have uh, some 300 students from the Republic of Korea studying at George Washington. Uh, over the years, it's been our largest source of international students. And that's one of the reasons why on my very first trip uh, on behalf of the George Washington University when I became president in the fall of 2007, the first place I visited was the Republic of Korea. And that was in the fall of 2007. I returned that spring to attend uh, the inauguration of uh, President Lee myung bak uh, who had an association with our university. And in fact, uh, that was one of my first occasions to hear, as we heard beautifully sung today, the national anthem on that uh, cold February day where we uh, had the presidential inauguration. And then in 2012, the university held our global forum in Seoul. So we've had a very strong and continue to have a growing connection with the Republic of Korea. We also have a long-standing commitment to Korean studies as the first university in the District of Columbia to offer Korean language as part of the regular curriculum. And having one of the most distinguished members of our international affairs faculty the last century uh, in the person of Professor Gaston Sigur, he served as Assistant Secretary of State for East Asian and Pacific Affairs in the Reagan administration. And he's remembered for his role in encouraging South Korea's transition from military rule to the modern democracy it enjoys today. He's also the namesake of our Sigur Center for Asian Studies, where this important new institute will be housed. Our world famous Han Musuk uh, Colloquium in Korean Humanities will host its 25th annual, 25th annual meeting this fall, as you've heard. And finally, the Korean Management Institute in our School of Business offers executive education and an international exchange program with a robust research agenda. After lunch, we look forward to our conference, which will focus on Korean literature and the Korean diaspora. Again, I want to thank Chairman Adams for uh, his support of what will surely be an enlightening conversation. And it's now my pleasure to turn the program back over to our moderator, Professor Emerita young Ki Kim Reno. Uh, Dr. Dr. Uh, Neb will be leaving GW soon, and you can see how sad I will feel when he goes, but he will always uh, stay in our hearts. So thank you so much. Uh, next, I'd like to invite uh, uh, Chairman uh, William D. Bro Adams. and. Uh, when I was asked to apply for a grant to, to fund the opening uh, conference, it was not just uh, the chance that came to me, but it was really a recognition uh, of what we have done and what we are going to do. And uh, having the support of the National Endowment for the Humanities, such a moral booster. So thank you so much, Chairman Adams. Well, thank you, and good morning, everyone. Uh, so pleased to be here representing the National Endowment for the Humanities, and we're so pleased to be able to provide support for this important conference. I want to begin by congratulating the university on this inaugural day and this inaugural occasion of the Institute for Korean Studies. Great day. Very important work that will go on here and has been going on and I look forward to seeing the results of that work uh, over the years to come. But for now, congratulations. Uh, as some of you know, I was in Korea, and as Steve said, I think I was in Korea in October. 
Uh, and I went to attend the World Humanities Forum in Suwon, uh, Korea. But because of the very generous guidance of the ambassador and his staff, uh, I was able, in addition to attending the Humanities Forum, to experience firsthand the extraordinary and extraordinarily deep cultural and historical legacy of Korea as I visited some of the most prominent archives, museums, and libraries uh, in the country. It was a remarkable experience. And shame on me that I didn't know as much as I should have about the deep cultural traditions and history of Korea. But I learned a lot in that first uh, exposure. And there, in those places, and also at the conference, I became aware in an entirely new way of the extraordinary commitment that exists in Korea to the humanities. And it lives on at least two levels. Because it has such an enormously complicated and interesting cultural uh, legacy and history, the Koreans, I found, are enormously and powerfully committed to the preservation of that cultural and historical legacy and to the sharing of it with all Koreans. It is a very, very important thing to them. And I was so impressed by how that commitment plays itself out uh, within the museum community, within the historical archive community, and in many, many other ways across the country. But I was also aware and became aware, and this is even, I think, more important to us now globally, of the commitment to the humanities by way of the understanding that seems to be so um, general in Korea of how important the humanities are as society becomes ever more deeply technical and technological. Everyone I talk to in Korea, academics, government officials, museum directors, library directors, had a really deep and lively appreciation for how uh, overwhelmed, in some senses, we are now uh, by technique and by technology. They also have a wonderfully deep and, I think, much broader appreciation than we have here for how important the humanities are as society becomes ever more technical and technological. It's the capacities that are nurtured and explored in the humanities that become ever more important as our technical prowess increases. Of course, Korea has been through this extraordinary 60-year history of developing so quickly and so powerfully in this technical uh, domain. And it's perhaps because of that that they're so uh, deeply aware of the importance of the humanities. But I came away enormously impressed by their understanding of how important the humanities are now for all of us. And it's a lesson I think we need to learn around the world, and especially here in the United States. So my hope is that the exploration of the Korean humanities that will occur here uh, in this institute will uh, affect the surrounding city and region and give us not only insight into this enormously important cultural history, uh, but also into these deeper uh, understandings and capacities that the humanities represent and that have become so important uh, in the times in which we live. Thank you and congratulations. Next, I'd like to invite my dear friend and his very excellent and uh, very kind and very supportive ambassador from Korea, An Ho Young. How are you? Well, well this is a great day for me. This must be great for each and every one of you, but I have to confess to you, this is a great day for me as well. Why do I say that? It's because, as Youngi said, I'm ambassador of South Korea to the United States. And what do you think my dream will be? My dream is wider and deeper relations between Korea and United States. And then when there is my dream, think about it. I mean, inauguration of Korea Study Center at the George Washington University, and how much will be done by this inauguration of, of this uh, Korea Study Center at the George Washington University, then you could uh, understand why this is such a great day for me. 
So congratulations. But at the same time, I should be congratulating Yonggi, you, and then me in particular. <laughs> I, I often think about relations between Korea and United States. And when I do that, then of course I think about all the different layers of relations we have between Korea and the United States. Layer of security. Layer of economic relations. Layer of something called global partnership. And what we mean by global partnership is increasing partnership between Korea and United States to address increasing number of global issues like terrorism, climate change, poverty, the list goes on and on and on. And then they are very important layers, security, economic relations, global partnership, they are all very important layers. But at the same time, I often think maybe we can have stronger relations in security, we can have stronger relations in economics, we, have, we can have stronger relations in global partnership on the basis of stronger partnership on humanities. And this morning, if there is one word which has been repeated again and again and again, then it will be humanities. And I was thinking about explaining to you or sharing with you my views why humanities is so important for the coming 10 minutes. But I don't think I have to do that. Why? Because, of course, Dr. Adams has so e been so effective in letting us be convinced about how and why the study of humanities is so important. But I have to confess to you in the sense that that's one area where we have not had sufficient exchanges between Korea and United States so far, so far. And that is the reason why I appreciate and admire Yonggi so much in the sense that she, in fact, has been so courageous, she has been so resourceful, and then she has been so persistent. And then that's what, in fact, led the Korean studies at the George Washington, but at the same time in Washington, D.C., nation's capital, but at the same time in the, United, uh, and in the United States. But at the same time, at the end of the day, she, in much of the sense, was a lone ranger. So in that sense, I'm so glad that uh, this center is being inaugurated. In many sense, that will be vindication of all the efforts that Yonggi has made so far. But at the same time, I think, because now we have a good <coughs> basis, where at the George Washington University, which President Knapp has already reminded us, which is the largest university here in the nation's capital. So that, in fact, is on the one hand, vindication of all the efforts Yonggi has made, Brzezinski has made, Minzu has made, but at the, Jisoo has made. But at the same time, because now we have this, this basis, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to build far stronger relations between Korea and United States in the area of where? Humanities. So that, I think, is all the more reason why this is such a great day for me, and then all the best. Thank you so much. Uh, next, uh, actually, uh, the dean of the Elliott School, uh, our uh, fairly recent dean, uh, Royben Brigotti, was going to speak, and he's gravely ill this morning. And his uh, remarks will be read by uh, our dear Ed McCord, who is uh, executive vice, vice dean. <laughs> of the earlier school, and my old, old friend. He's a very, very uh, sincere and really practical support of everything we do in, in the Kore Korean humanities and Korean studies in general. Thank you. And he's uh, actually a specialist in Asian studies. Thank you. Yeah, I, I know Dean Brigitte really wanted to be here today, and I saw him last night as he left the office, and he looked very um, not well, and I, so I kind of feared this was going to happen, so I, I came today not realizing I was going to speak for him, but now I'm going to speak for him. I'm, actually, 
it's a great pleasure for me to do that because I, I feel a special connection to what's happening today. In my other previous hats I wore, I was previously Director of Asian Studies, I was Director of the uh, Gaston Segura Center for Asian Studies, and over the last 20 years I've interacted a lot with the uh, East Asian Language and Literatures Department and with the Korean Studies faculty, and in particular with, with Yong Ki. Um, and I, I like to think of her maybe as, I like to think of myself maybe as her co-conspirator as we try to plan and scheme for the expansion of Korean studies, but maybe I'm more like her lackey. I'm not really <laughs> sure. I don't think as a co-conspirator is the right way to look at this. I think I always served underneath her in these, these objectives. Um, it's very honored to, have, to be with you all here today and all our di very distinguished guests. I really appreciate that the ambassador was able to join us today and all the other people that have come from Korean around, around the world uh, to, to join us today. Um, we are really thrilled that the new Korean Institute is going to be housed here at the Elliott School inside the Gaston Segura Center for Asian Studies. And I think this is really going to solidify our connection and our commitment to Korea and Korean studies at the school. But I also want to take, take note that the, the Korean Institute, even though it's housed in the Elliott School, like the Segura Center, is actually a university in, research institute. So it's recognized as a university research institute. And we real, really see this then as the, the Korean Institute acting as a focal point for all sorts of Korean studies activities that are going to be going on around the entire university. So it's not limited to one school. This is really a university-wide effort, I think, we're seeing here today that's finally come to fruition. Um, and I don't want to take any more time that I just want to say that uh, really with the establishment of the Institute, we hope to consolidate and enhance um, our Korean Studies program at GW and across the greater DC area. So our focus, I think, at GW in particular is never just what we do here, but how we interact with the rest of the DC community and actually with the nation. And that's one of the advantages we have with, with our location. So I'm very proud to be part of the Korean Studies launch, and I want to congratulate the Institute and all the people, Jisoo Kim and Greg and everybody that was involved in uh, putting this thing together and putting the Institute together. And I wish you you all the best luck in the future. Thank you. Now I, I'd like to invite my also my dear friend and honored guest from Korea. Uh, his name is Kim Songon, and he's president of Literature International. I mean, uh, Translation Institute, Literature Translation Institute of Korea. He's actually an eminent scholar of English literature and Korean literature, and, and uh, he is a former dean of Seoul National University. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very pleased to be here today at this special occasion of the opening ceremony of the Institute for Korean Studies at George Washington University. We all know that George Washington University is the gateway not only to Washington, D.C., but also to the United States, but also to the whole world. And I'm very proud of having GW as my dearest friend. There are strong ties between Korea and GW. Actually, I'm wearing a GW tie here, <laughs> a symbol of our ties. Dean Vincent gave it to me as a memento when he visited Korea some time ago. I really appreciate this. Um, GW has always been a very special place for the Korean people because we, uh, President Nat has already mentioned and uh, Professor Chizu Kim has already mentioned. Our first President Singman Lee was a graduate of GW and also So Pil, who was the founder of the famous independence newspaper published in the United States, published in Korean. Uh, he was also a graduate of GW, and we have also a strong alumni association chapter of Korea. And we say, out of sight, out of mind. When you do not see a person for a long time, you just forget about him. But Koreans do not care about geographical distances. When we become friends, your Korean, Korean friends will never forget you. Uh, they will remember you for a long, long time. Actually, Korean pop songs, folk songs, and poetry are full of the theme of missing who is someone who is far away. That's the Korean sentiment. How do you make friends in Korea? If you go to a bar and drink together, you can become good friends instantly. Koreans trust anybody who can drink a lot. 
if you don't drink, don't worry. You can still go to a karaoke room and a sing a song together. You can become good friends immediately. <laughs> karaoke rooms began in Japan, but they flourish in Korea. <laughs> Koreans like singing and dancing. Uh, when you sing and dance, you need alcoholic beverages. That is why Koreans like drinking. Lately, we know that Korea has been widely and favorably known to all over the world for its spectacular economic success and cutting-edge technology, uh, symbolized by Samsung, LG, and Hyundai, and also democratization. It has been only 63 years since the Korean War, and South Korea has accomplished amazingly uh, democratization. And also, because of Hallyu, the uh, popularity of Korean pop culture, K-pop, and Korean TV shows, and everything. Um, 35, 38 years ago, actually, when I was studying in the United States, at that time I saw American students put up a poster of the Beatles or Che Guevara uh, on the wall of their dorm room. Today, I noticed that they put up a poster of Psy and the girls' generation, K-pop, girls' vocal group, and I'm very proud of that, and I'm happy to see that. Uh, President Love and uh, Chairman Adams and Dean Vincent and many others have already visited Korea. Those of you who have not been to Korea yet, please do visit Korea in the near future. They say Korea is a very convenient place to stay. You can use your cell phone everywhere in the subway, yes, in the basement, yes, in the mountain, yes. And also Wi-Fi is available everywhere. And if you take a taxi in Seoul, all the taxis accept credit cards, so you don't need to carry cash which is very convenient. And also, you can cry as much as you want in Korea, no matter how old you are, it's okay. Koreans do not attach stigma to crying. Koreans are very compassionate people. We like sad stories. In English, we say a bold sings, but we say a bold cries. When the wind blows, we say the wind cries. When the river flows, we say the stream cries. We basically perceive everything as crying, not singing. <laughs> Koreans are easily moved by sad stories. And they also say that Korea is a very safe place to stay. There are no guns in Korea. So you can hang around the streets of Korea after midnight, still you will be very safe. Seoul is a gigantic city just like DC or New York City, but its crime rates are very low. And Koreans are very religious, as you may know. There are so many Buddhists and Christians in Korea. And there are 50,000 church buildings in Korea, and each and every church building has a cross on top of it. At night times, those crosses are shining. That is why we don't have any vampires in Korea. <laughs> no vampires can survive in Korea because we have so many crosses. We have garlic in our food and plenty of sunshine. So welcome to Seoul, Korea. It's a very safe place. Once again, my heartfelt congratulations. This is a new beginning for GW and for Korea as well. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you. The, uh, the Institute wouldn't be here without the uh, grant, uh, major grant from the Academy of Korean Studies. And uh, the very newly appointed the president couldn't be here, but he sent uh, his remarks, which will be read by Richard Grinker, who is uh, our own uh, institute member, and also he's the director of uh, African studies. I mean, uh, uh, I think uh, it's called the Institute for African Studies. And uh, he's been uh, my companion for, the, for three decades. Ever since he came to GW, he's been a co-convener of the Hanmus Colloquium in the Humanities, and he's also a major editor of a major anthropology <laughs> journal. So please welcome Richard. Thank you. I'm uh, honored to be able to uh, give the congratulatory remarks written by uh, Yi Kidong, uh, president of the Academy of Korean Studies. His bio uh, is in your program. Uh, and uh, so I will will read the remarks that, that he sent to us. Honorable speakers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, 
Allow me to begin by expressing my warm congratulations on today's opening ceremony of the Institute for Korean Studies at the George Washington University. I would like to take this opportunity to thank President Stephen Knapp, faculty members, and the other officials of the George Washington University who helped make this event possible, in particular, Professor Emerita Younggi Kim Renault. Since 2006, the Academy of Korean Studies has supported Korean Studies promotion projects implemented by 123 institutions in 52 countries. And I am delighted to say that the outstanding project proposal, spearheaded by Professor Ji Soo Kim, Professor Kim Renault, Professor Celeste Arrington, Professor Myok Pak, Professor Richard Grinker, and Professor Greg Brzezinski of the George Washington University was selected as a recipient for the 2016 Core University Program for Korean Studies. The Academy will support the new institute for the next five years. The United States has played a central role in developing Korean studies overseas. And we're so proud to support the prestigious George Washington University, the university that educated the very first Korean American citizen in the United States, So Ji Peel, during the early 19, 1890s. The university will play a key role in developing research and education in Korean studies, spreading its achievements and collaborations worldwide, and enhancing the public interest and knowledge of Korea. I joyfully look forward to seeing the results of our commitment to GW. I know that all the professors and staff that we support are promoting Korean research and education every day. The Academy of Korean Studies will always do its best to cooperate if there is anything you need for the Institute. Before I close, may I once again express my very best wishes for the George Washington University Institute for Korean Studies. I hope that the Academy of Korean Studies and the George Washington University will continue to cooperate for many years and achieve mutual prosperity. Thank you, Yi Hidong, President of the Academy of Korean Studies. Thank you, Richard. Um, next, I'd like to present uh, the director of uh, the Washington Regional Office of the Korea Foundation. Uh, if the Academy of Korean Studies is directly responsible for the creation of the Institute, what really made it possible is a constant and major support we have received from the Korea Foundation in terms of all the programs, research grants, travel grants, and uh, just simply even students' activities, uh, that sort of thing, we have never been met with a downright refusal. Sometimes when our proposals were not good, we didn't get it, but most of the times, for the last 20, I mean 30 some years, we've gotten major grants from the Korea Foundation. And the most important, of course, are three endowed professorships. And you know, when it's an endowed professorship, nobody can take it away. <laughs> so thank you so much. And uh, Ms. Lee, uh, uh, the President, <laughs> Yi Shi Young actually sent also his remarks, and it will be read by the director, the regional director, Xian Li. Hello, thank you, Dr. Kim. It's a um, great pleasure to be here today to read um, Korea Foundation President Yi Shi Young's congratulatory message on his uh, on his behalf. So um, here it is, um, Dr. Stephen Knapp. President of George Washington University, um, William, Dr. William Adams, Chairman of National Endowment for Humanities, Dr. Um, Dr. Ben Benson, Dean of Columbian College of Arts and Sciences, um, Professor Yang Ki Kim Reno, um, Professor Ji Soo Kim, Professor Greg Brzezinski from this newly established Institute for Korean Studies at GW and dist distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It's my honor and pleasure to deliver my congratulatory message for this auspicious gathering. 
On behalf of the Korea Foundation, I'd like to extend my heartiest congratulations on the inauguration of the Institute for Korean Studies at George Washington University. I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the university's leading role in East Asian studies in the US and to express my appreciation for its strong support in enhancing Korean studies as well as East Asian studies. Over the past 25 years, support, from, support for Korean studies has been at the core of the Korea Foundation's effort to build an extensive infrastructure to promote understanding of Korea abroad. Thus far, the foundation support programs for universities and academic so associations have been primarily focused on the region of North America. As a result, the Korea Foundation has established 122 professor positions on Korean studies in 13 countries, which includes 75 professorships in the US. Among them, GW has played a leading role in East Asian studies, especially since its insightful establishment of Seeger Center for Asian Studies in 1991. I believe it is very meaningful that this newly established Institute for Korean Studies will be housed in the Seeger Center, which is a primary place in the U.S. capital to educate students, scholars, policymakers, and analysts who will work closely with East Asia. Since GW offered the first Korean language courses as part of its regular curriculum in 1983, Korean studies at the university has expanded its academic sphere to humanities, to the social sciences, and prominent Korean studies faculty members have been, um, have been hired. Among them, the university established two endowed professorships in Korean history and political science in collaboration with the Korea Foundation. And our two organizations recently decided to stop, establish a third endowed professorship in Korean literature and culture. I am especially privileged to see Professor Ji Su Kim, the first Korea Foundation professor at GW, become the founding director of GW's new Institute for Korean Studies. I am certain that all of you share in my belief that this inauguration of Institute for Korean Studies hardly suggests the culmination of our cooperation. On the contrary, this will serve as another cornerstone for our joint effort to further promote career-related research, conferences, publication activities at George Washington University. I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge Dr. Yonggi Kim Reno. Um, Dr. Jisoo Kim, Dr. Greg Brzezinski, Dr. Celis Arrington, Dr. Richard um, Grinker, Dr. Miyok Park, and other faculty members for their passion and efforts to advance Korean studies and promote exchange between GW and universities in Korea. Lastly, I'd like to express my gratitude to those who organized this gathering. Special thanks to um, President Stephen Knapp. Dr. Yonggi Kim Runo and, and the staff who worked so hard to bring us together here today. And I wish you all, um, all much personal fulfillment in your individual endeavors. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you, Shiyan. Um Now, uh, I'd like to introduce our kind of new, brand new senior associate Provost for International Strategy. This is a newly created position. And the minute I met her, he actually invited me for a private lunch to get to know each other. And I felt instant support for the humanities, although his background is in security studies. So you see, we all work together with many different sectors of the university. Doug? Thank you, Young Ki. I'm, I'm as humbled today as I was at that lunch uh, to uh, interact with colleagues of such extraordinary accomplishment and leaders of such extraordinary partner institutions. This is a really exciting moment uh, that I see fundamentally as a disruptive act that's authentically aligned with centuries of performance and potential here at GW, uh, and an urgent need in Washington and the United States to better understand the world. The element, the disruptive element, locating a major research university here in the heart of Washington, D.C. is a disruptive act. It resists the temptation to suggest that knowledge and the facts, while interesting, are somehow irrelevant to the exercise of power. 
establishing an institute for Korea studies here emphasizes the fact that knowledge of Korea is important for what goes on here in town and the business of Washington, D.C. and the United States, and that's very exciting for me. This effort is authentically aligned with centuries of performance. Uh, several of the speakers have called out the extraordinary connection between the George Washington University and the Republic of Korea that extends over 100 years into the past. We're also a powerhouse of regional studies here at George Washington University with regional studies uh, focus and capacity extending more than half a century backward. Uh, the Seeger Center itself being the, the, uh, uh, the uh, most excellent center for Asian studies here in the nation's capital. And this moment when we're making Korean studies a structural member of the university is very exciting from that, that, uh, that perspective. President Lee's remarks that, um, that this is a cornerstone for future collaboration resonates with me because it, it, it builds on centuries of performance by GW and centuries of possibility between those two institutions. And then finally, the res that this activity responds to an urgent need in the United States and Washington to better understand the world. As other speakers have observed better than I can, the alliance between the United States and the Republic of Korea is crucial for global security and prosperity. And the humanities are crucial to the intersubjective understanding that makes that alliance possible. And better understanding of the humanities, access to, uh, to a touch point, to, uh, to understand each other is absolutely essential. Uh, but for my background in security studies, I'd add a, a, a layer that I find even more fundamental and important, which is that when understanding fails, on matters of politics and economics and, uh, and sovereign privilege, the, uh, the ability to connect with the other uh, is, is incredibly important. Um, future American leaders will need Korean friends. Because of what the people in this room have accomplished here today, they will have some uh, that they made here at GW, and that's very exciting. And so I'm, I'm very grateful for this moment to, uh, to celebrate this disruptive act authentically aligned with centuries of performance and potential here at GW in regional studies uh, that responds to what I see as an urgent need for the United States and Washington particularly to better understand the world. Thank you so much. Now, I, I finally come to my dear Dean Ben Vincent, my friend and my supporter and my moral booster and uh, everything. We sometimes exchange messages after midnight because we both are very busy and we have had some low points and we consoled each other. And uh, I don't know what I would have done without Dean Ben Vincent. Ben. It's it's hard to be up here after so many wonderful things have been said. Uh, and I'm going to try to, uh, to kind of bring some things to, to a bit of closure here uh, as, we, as we end this phase and move into, uh, into the lunch period. Uh, I think one of the things that may not have been said, or a couple of things that have, may not have been said, apart from thanking everyone for everything that has, uh, for, for all of the investment that has been made into this incredible uh, institute is that uh, a couple of observations. I think we all recognize right now that, that we're living in a world of, of silos. Um, and in ways that we become closer in this world, uh, ways in which technologies bring us closer together, and, and ways in which information circulates and we know each other better, as these processes take place and will continue to take place with greater rapidity into the 21st century, as these things happen, we are observing entrenchment. We are observing country after country, town after town, and community after community, ways in which we are becoming less attuned to the world around us. It's in moments like these where I strongly feel that, that centers and institutes play a pivotal role. Uh, in this world of silos, these structures are magnets. And uh, I'll, I'll go into my own experience a bit. Uh, I uh, am a scholar of Latin America, and uh, I'm a specialist on colonial Mexico. 
And before taking uh, my job here at the George Washington University uh, as Dean of Arts and Sciences, uh, that was my world of the United States, but really Latin America. Um, and so uh, one of the surprises that I had was, uh, was arriving here and being thrust into uh, the directorship of the Confucius Institute. Uh, <laughs> And I remember a, a, a meeting in which uh, uh, some members in this room, uh, I seeing looking at a couple of them, uh, looked at me with some suspicion. <laughs> what kind of expertise is this guy going uh, to bring to this institute? I realized in the moment of a, of a meeting where I, quite truthfully, I'll be honest, where I was being jacked up by this, uh, by, by this set of individuals, that, uh, that what's important is not necessarily always the expertise but it's the ability to understand cross-cultural contact. It's the ability to understand uh, getting out of that comfort zone and being able to understand the essences of, of, of what, that, what, the, what those other cultures and possibilities may bring that round our communities out uh, as, as with greater potential uh, and as greater, uh, and, and greater people. And that was what, uh, one of the things that I realized early in, this, in the directorship of the Confucius Institute. That experience was radiated even further during my uh, travels last year uh, to, to East Asia and to Korea. Uh, and my eyes were open like you would not believe at the things that I saw in Seoul, the monuments that I visited, the people that I visited. President Kim uh, of the Literature Translation Institute was an incredible host. Uh, and uh, my eyes were, were opened as you, as you would not believe. Institutes have the power to be these magnets using humanities, using culture as a bridge. I'll close with an experience of, of, a, of a student uh, in the arts and sciences who's now graduated, who I think exemplifies uh, this, very, this very experience and the power of what this institute uh, may bring. Uh, she was an African-American student who uh, um, came to George Washington University. She worked with Professor Kim Renault uh, and others in our, in our wonderful program of East Asian, uh, East Asian Languages and Literature, and was captivated by the, by the Korean language. And spent time studying in Korea, and I had a chance to see her uh, give a presentation as she graduated from GW. I was blown away at the things that she'd learned and the ways in which she was connecting her own personal heritage as an African-American woman and thinking about that particular framework within, uh, within Korea. It led to uh, a, an astonishing uh, a thesis. I believe she has gone on to graduate school. But I see this as the power of this institute. Yes, you will see many things uh, that will be uh, the delight of experts in Korea, throughout Washington, and throughout the world. And that's good. And that's necessary. But you will also have the opportunity to make this institute perhaps the premier institute of cross-cultural contact in the United States. And I, for one, as a Dean of Arts and Sciences, look forward to that moment. Thank you. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. I'm standing between you and lunch. <laughs> so enjoy. Thank you. This room seats. 100 people, but we have had the official registration of 150 people. And there are many people who are actually uh, very sorry not to be able to come. Some will be admitted to the conference because some will just just go home after the lunch. So, uh, And then many people wrote to me to congratulate including some of our own um, uh, deans and uh, uh, vice president for research. I'm going to read a very short uh, message I received from uh, Leo Chalupa, who is the vice president for research. And uh, after thanking all these people, he said, GW's commitment to the humanities and its history of contributions to the field of Korean studies is well documented. As a hub of cross-disciplinary scholarship, the Institute will further cement GW's leadership in this area. The Institute is an exciting addition to the campus and to the university's research enterprise. 
Dean Linda Livingstone, Dean of School of Business, where we have a major institute for Korean studies also, uh, uh, wrote thanking for the invitation. She's out of the country, and she sent her best. Dean uh, David Dolling, School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. In that school, we also have a major exchange with the Korea University. And uh, Dean Dolling has been a staunch supporter of Korean studies. They have actually real exchange programs where many GW students go to Korea to study and Korean students come to us to study. Finally, you remember Harry Harding? Mm. He's a dean before Dean East. And it all started with him. And he wrote to me, this is wonderful news. I remember when we started this project together. And I am delighted that it has now come into full fruition. Best wishes for a fabulous 2017. And there's still another surprise. We will have a new president. His name is Thomas J. Leblanc. I don't know how actually he pronounces it. He's, he's currently executive vice president and provost at the University of Miami. And he wrote, thank you for the warm note of welcome and congratulations on the new institute. I look forward to learning more about it when I arrive. So what more could we want at this point? We feel very incredibly blessed, incredibly humbled, and incur incredibly encouraged to merit all those support and encouragement. Thank you so much. And now I'd like to uh, invite uh, uh, President Knapp to officially open the institute and we'll do the tape cutting ceremony. So everybody should wear Korean style. We'll wear white gloves. <laughs> Give him a mic. Oh, hi. Yeah, like this is good. <laughs> well, uh, a, we need to make this a little more taut. Hold, hold. We can pull the ribbons taut. Yeah, so and I will now declare the come, come, come. GMU School for Korean Studies officially open. One, two, three. Well done.